Right now in Georgia, there are two Senate seats up for grabs. And one of those races, close to two dozen candidates are, are running in a unique system. It's called the jungle primary. And it puts both members of both parties in one big race to see if anyone can hit 50 percent. If not, uh, the top two will go to a runoff. I'm joined now by Reverend Raphael Warnock. He's running in that complicated Georgia Senate primary as a Democrat. Uh, Reverend Warnock is also the, the senior pastor of uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Reverend Warnock, thanks for your time this morning. Do appreciate you. Thank you. It's great to be here with you. Uh, this race strains for two big reasons. One, you're running against both Democrats and Republicans. Two, there are big questions, as you know, about voting rights there, specifically uh, in, in Georgia because of a, a voter roll purge, questions about double voting raised by the Secretary of State. What, what's your strategy? Well, well, it's good to be here with you. Uh, we have uh, two Senate races, as you point out, here in the state of Georgia. We're the only state where that's true. I'm running in the special election uh, to finish the last two years of a term started by Republican uh, Senator Johnny Isaacson. Um, I'm running really uh, not in a way of launching a new campaign. In my view, I'm continuing a campaign that I've been on for years, fighting for health care, uh, fighting for economic justice, particularly uh, for the people we're calling essential workers right now. We're not paying them an essential wage. I've been engaged in this fight for voting rights right here in Georgia, which is ground zero for voter suppression. I grew up in this state. I was raised uh, in public housing, one of 12 children. I was number 11, the first college graduate in my family. Somehow I made it through college, earned a PhD degree, became the pastor of Dr. King's church. And I'm running for the U.S. Senate to continue the work that I've been doing uh, from that pulpit uh, for about 15 years now. There's not, as you know, uh, a lot of new reliable polling in this race. What's your internal polling telling you? Oh, our, our internal polling shows that when people hear my story, that I'm already a few points ahead of the incumbent uh, in a head-to-head -head match. As you point out, we're not yet in a head-to-head -head match. There are 21 people uh, in my race. But I think that my uh, long career of service uh, will stand out and that we're getting great momentum uh, in this race. So we're telling my story on air and we'll continue uh, to tell that story. Uh, in this moment in which we are dealing with uh, vast inequities in this country, uh, COVID-19 and then what I call COVID-16-19, our ongoing struggle with race in this country. I know that pain personally, as we pointed out in an ad that we released just this morning that talks about my own experience with racial profiling as a preteen uh, here in Georgia. Uh, we're facing those issues yet again, and I hope to bring the voices of ordinary people who see the difference between them and the wealthy and well and the well connected, not only in the area of criminal justice, but in health care, housing, and a whole range of issues. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. We're seeing we're seeing a lot of momentum in my race. I think the wind is at our back, which is why the other side is engaged in voter suppression. Uh, they will not prevail. We had record turnout in this state during the uh, primary on June 9th. You saw the long lines. You saw uh, the corruption and the incompetence right here in our state. The good news is that in spite of it all, Georgia voters lined up with a deep commitment to exercise their basic constitutional right. Uh, we outperformed them in turnout, and we're going to prevail yep. uh, in uh, over hey, the Reverend, next few days. And weeks. 